But we've worked together for what, 10 years? <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. It is Thursday night, and welcome to the American Sci Fi Classics track. Welcome to the latest quarantine panel. Uh, watch this. Look, Gary, you can't, you, you can't see me. Look. And uh, everything was improved. <laughs> Tonight, we, there's my gigantic cranium <laughs> with my 12th level intelligence, like Brainiac 5. What, uh, Tonight, we're talking about dogs, and um, we're doing that because people complained when we did a panel about cats. And it is International Rescue Day. Oh. See, look how clever we are. We're so clever, we didn't even know it. Didn't even know it was happening, and we happened to set it for this day. Gary, I dare say, we are geniuses. I yes. dare say it as well. None so dare say otherwise. Uh, ha, ha. So what we're going to do today with um, horizontal Lola right there. <laughs> I, you know, my dogs always turn my screen sideways. They jump on the keyboard and I always have to get my cell phone and Google how to turn my screen back. <laughs> That's what I'm doing now. Lola and her dogs are actually in orbit right now, high <laughs> above the earth. <laughs> and normally I don't do shows with them around because of this, but it felt wrong to not do this show without them. No, so. yeah. Somehow it's nice. perfect for tonight's show that your dogs have taken over and uh, right. dis disrupted your camera setup. I like it. Yeah, and, and it says Control yeah. Alt and Up. Control Alt and Up. Control Alt and Up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's what we're doing. We're talking about the best dogs in Sci-fi, fantasy, horror, TV, Am movies, that kind of thing. Um, yes. We we thought about doing briefly a competition of the best dogs. Then we thought maybe dog fighting was not a good idea <laughs> on a uh, usually nonviolent ish podcast uh, video thing, video cast. What do we call this? We call this quarantine panels. We don't care, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we are showcasing the awesomeness and fun of Dragon Con and every other sci-fi convention by doing these kind of things, the kind of things you would see in person, and hopefully later on this year you will see in person. Uh, I, I think I've over-explained it. Let's go around the horn and introduce everybody. My, first of all, one internet to my left is my unindicted co-conspirator, Mr. Gary Mitchell. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Two internets away from Gary. <laughs> Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm uh, I'm the one and only host of the Flopcast. There is no co-host, and uh, I don't think there's anyone on the call who could disagree with that statement. So take my word for it, Flopcast. Uh, just me. Um. Yes. Kevin, well, oh, one, two, three minute. internets away from <laughs> huh. three internets away from me. Long one. Allegedly, the co-host, <laughs> the unindicted co-host of the Flopcast, Cornflake. Hi. Oh, this is awkward. Didn't see you down there, Cornflake. <laughs> <laughs> we actually Can figured out. But... <laughs> Before the show started, we figured out how we could merge into just one Flopcast host. Oh, should we do that again? Here we go. See, that's good. I like that. Ah! That is pretty good. You were so, you were so busy wondering if you could do it. You didn't think to stop if you should. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I let's see. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, go ahead, Corflick. Oh, I just wanted to say I brought something extra special for tonight's panel. I've been saving this pin for a special occasion. Ooh, oh, nice. I am so insanely jealous. My bestie nice. gave this to me. So and I do great. cool things like that because I, too, am on the Flopcast. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Thank you very much, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and for the very first time... And we have a brand new uh, quarantine panel guest, Linda. Tell everybody who you are and what do you do? Uh, uh, I couldn't 
say I'm a guest. I was just wondering what you guys were going to talk about. It sounded interesting. Nobody's ever had a panel about dogs in science fiction before. See? Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Welcome, we Linda. Do. Thank you. We do, we do stuff nobody else thought of. And <laughs> not... Lastly, but certainly not leastly, she's been on the quarantine panels before. Lola, welcome. Hi, Lola. Hey, nice to meet you, Linda. Um, well, I got myself straight on now, and now I'm trying to figure out how I'm both on Wi-Fi and Ethernet, because apparently the Wi-Fi is taking precedent, and I keep freezing. And Come try so we're, we're going to figure that out. Before, before the end of the show, I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> That's, that's good. That's a, that's a good cliffhanger mm -hmm. for everybody to keep tuning in for the inside baseball commentary on how to make this thing you're watching work correctly. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, what do you say? Here's what I thought we would talk about, uh, what we decided to talk about, because we did a Best Cats before, and I think we did Bunnies um, uh, a few weeks ago, but we haven't yet done dogs, and there are plenty of dog dog and dog related things that we can talk about so let's let the upper half of Gary Mitchell's face start us off <laughs> it's like, uh, I, uh, yes open up messenger you're gonna say and click Joe? on the link oh hey Gary whoa yes uh woof Woof. I'm I'm gonna start off with I think what has got to be everybody's favorite space dog, the one we all know and love, the one that wormed their way into our hearts in the '70s, that has become an icon of science fiction. And if you think of dogs in space, you never think about any other dog, except for the one from Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> First mention, Daggett. Yeah. Daggett. Daggett. I had so many Daggett toys because it was one of the only sci-fi toys that was discounted immediately <laughs> and was bought for me by relatives who thought, oh, he's into that sci-fi stuff. So I had a, a plethora of, I had a herd of Daggett's. That's and, <laughs> and uh, I always feel bad for the poor chimp inside that suit. <laughs> I always... Or Kevin, was it an orangutan? It was... This would be something you would know. Yeah, it wasn't it was uh, I think a, a chimp in a costume. The one thing I remember is they I think it was it was on the Sci-Fi Channel, and the reason we our I, this is stuck with me is because they did a Talking Heads documentary type of thing on the Sci-Fi Channel about original Battlestar Galactica, and they revealed that there was a monkey inside the Daggett suit, and that totally changed my understanding of the Daggett existence from that point on. And I believe it was maybe Richard Hatch or Dirk Benedict or somebody who got to say the immortal line, when the monkey would misbehave, they would have to spank the monkey. And we all had a good laugh 20 years ago, uh, whenever... And and then I I that why is that stuck in my head? These are good questions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but the main reason I also bring it up sort of seriously is it was one of the few things in, that was sort of serious in the show where they brought up the fact that pets are important. See? The whole reason they came up with that it was you know they'd lost so many animals and the kid needed a friend because Lord knows the kid couldn't make any. <laughs> <laughs> boxy freaking boxy and, yeah so they and yes i am going to do this for the whole panel i'm doing it from right down here um uh, i'm just yeah gonna do the uh that thing you know so there is you know it's an important kind of concept of uh, if we go into space we're bringing pets with us i hear somebody echoing. Yeah. i'm making my points three times over <laughs> yeah yeah Oh, there's me again. There's me again. There's me again. All right, so who's not using headphones? I'm freaking out. I feel like I should do drugs at this point. <laughs> yeah. 
I think we might be coming through Linda's audio. Maybe? Nope. Okay, oh, yeah. there we go. Yay. No, lo, it's not Lolo. Lolo muted. Okay. I might have hey, phones. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's Linda. I think it's Linda. Linda, if uh, like um, I just muted. Oh dear. Oh dear. My computer's My muted. Computer's muted. How about yours? I don't. We can hear you, Linda. Yeah, Linda, if, <laughs> no, if you were Linda, muted. No. You got to mute in the Streamyard mm -hmm. chat. <laughs> Okay. It should be in the window with your picture there. I feel like I'm. There we I go. Feel like I'm. There we go. I feel like I'm falling into a spiral. Yeah, but when, uh, but of course, Linda, we will allow you to speak. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll call on you at uh, shortly. Uh, by any so, chance you have earbuds or headphones or anything that you could attach, that would be fantastic if you have them, Linda. But if okay. not, we'll, we'll, we'll we're, work we're with it. It's fine. All right. It's fine. So, <laughs> so yeah, Daggett. I uh, that that I, I had to lead off with Daggett. You had to. You had to. Um. So let's uh, we'll keep it moving. We may have to come back to Daggett. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of Daggett stuff. We got to do Battlestar Galactica stuff at some point with our friends from the uh, military sci-fi track. But Kevin. Yeah. Well, uh, since Cornflake teased this one already, and one of my absolute favorite dogs from uh, science fiction and pop culture in general, so we got to talk crypto, right? I, oh, the, the pen. I love crypto. <laughs> I Always love this. Have. This is the Alex Ross painted crypto version on the screen here. It's looking uh, super heroic. But yeah, crypto, for people who don't know the, the, the origin story of crypto, it's like Superman's pet dog, Superboy's pet dog in the comics and has appeared in some of the cartoons and things as well. But the initial premise was that Jor-El, Superman's father, was experimenting with his rockets uh, you know, prior to launching his baby into space. So cr crypto was the, the test launch. <laughs> he sent the dog into space first. It went off course, did not make it to Earth uh, ahead of baby Kal-El, but eventually, as all things from Krypton do, yeah. everything eventually somehow finds its way to Earth. And so suddenly a dog from Krypton with all the powers and abilities of Superman, yep. that's Crypto. He's he's the best dog. He infamously, not well, maybe not infamously, famously maybe his most important story was the Alan Moore, whatever happened to the man mm. of tomorrow. Yeah, That's the yeah. most poignant crypto story. Oh. Every other story is more fun, shall we say, than that one for crypto, yeah. certainly. Yeah. I mean, it usually it would be a supporting character in Superboy stories, but crypto had his own stories as well. They would be ba yeah. crypto backup stories in a lot of Superman, Superboy comics over the years, certainly in the 60s and 70s. Uh, I, I was just, I reread a crypto story just a few weeks ago out of like a Superman family comic or an action oh, or something. Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh, crypto was just kind of romping through space as he normally did Dylan? and was called back to earth, thought Superman was calling him back to earth. It turned out it was actually a guy that Lord like faked Superman signal Lord crypto back to earth so that he could star in a dog food commercial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sixties. <laughs> and, and so he did <laughs> crypto made the dog food commercial. It was fabulous. <laughs> That's great. I, um, <laughs> I there's no top in that. The, <laughs> a few years ago, I and and this kind of came and went, and I, I don't think it's on any of the various DC Universe or HBO Max streaming things. But oh, Cornflake dropped out. We'll get her back. Hey. Um, she. I was thinking about Cornflake. I was gonna say crypto, and I was thinking about Cornflake. That's right, Cornflake, who came to our planet from crypto. <laughs> I think she did. Yes, there's Cornflake. Uh, there was a crypto animated series. Yes. 
by all the people who make all the DC superhero animated series of the last few years. And he was, um, he, he was crypto and he lived with a human boy, but they explained in the very end of the first episode, Superman said, Hey man, I'm going to let you keep him. <laughs> Superman shows up at the very end of that first episode and says, Hey, human child that I don't know, you can keep my super powered alien doll. <laughs> and, sure. But then over the course of the series, uh, he meets and teams up with Ace the Bat Hound. Yep. You know, mwah, and I think Lex Luthor's dog is in it at some point. So <laughs> find that. And it's an evil hairless dog. <laughs> I hope it was hairless. It was. And I must hope have been. That, must and I hope hairless. that crypto somehow is 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 it's crypto's fault somehow. That's what I <laughs> somehow crypto blew his crypto hair. Out. Gave him mange. <laughs> <laughs> so always good stuff with crypto. Absolutely. I, uh, yeah. And to answer Sherman's uh, question, wasn't um, did crypto and Bat Dog ever team up? Uh, yes, there was actually Kevin. You can back me up on this. There was a whole legion of super pets. Oh, yes, there was. The Legion of Super Pets was Crypto and Streaky the Super Cat, Comet the Super Horse, uh, Beppo the Super Monkey, who was also from Krypton, and then that shape-shifting blob named Prody. Uh, Ace, a lot of the, questions. A lot yeah, of questions about Prody. Uh, 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 Comet was the weird one, even weirder than, than Prody. Comet was but, yeah. the weirdest. Comet, well, we could, a, Comet could turn into a person. That was oh, yeah, was really yeah. weird. It Comet was, was a person yeah. who could turn into a wait. I, I assume we I will think do he was a, a horse who could turn into a person. We'll have to do a horse panel at some point. Horse and we'll, panel. we'll definitely yeah. do a deep dive on Comet. But the yeah, Ace, we have Ace, to have, uh, T, we have, to have uh, T, uh, Tegan here for that, though. Yes. Yeah, we will. We'll, so, we'll make it happen. I don't think Ace uh, the Bat Hound was ever a member of the Legion of Super Pets, but they certainly did team up on occasion, Crypto and Ace, in uh, the comics and in cartoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh, and... and um. A super dog is on the Titan series on the it was on the DC Universe yes. app. Now now it's on HBO Max. There's um, a yeah, big white dog. It, on, yeah, it's crypto. We, oh, we, they have, call him crypto. I believe they have officially they you know, did because named it crypto. his eyes yes. he did the heat vision at one point. Okay, so yeah. 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 So yeah, we should we're gonna have more crypto, I believe, in Titans more, season look, three. More crypto content. That's what I want. I would like for them to just slowly remove humans and add until so we just shift the show into being a Legion of Super Pets TV series, live action. It's what we really yeah. wanted you anyway. Know? Why can't we just have cryptocurrency? That's what I thought it was <laughs> when I first heard of it. There is Dogecoin. But it's not super Dogecoin. That's true. <laughs> Ridiculous. So let's go to Linda. If You can unmute yourself and... Um, Tell us your uh, one, of, one of your favorite favorite dogs from uh, TV, movie, sci-fi, that kind of thing. Oh. Okay, that's you're not unmuted yet, Linda. We can't hear you. Okay, that's better. There, there you are. it is. Um, there you are. Uh, one of the the um, w uh, animals I thought about was there's a Heinlein story uh, called Tenderfoot in Space. And there's a little dog in that named Nixie. See, that's what I wanted. I want. I want to go deep. I want to go for the deep cuts. Tell us about that story, Linda. Um, it's one of two stories he did about the Boy Scouts, and he did it for um, Boys Life magazine. Oh. And uh, this story was about uh, a, a kid who's moving into space with his parents. I haven't read it for a while, so I don't remember all the particular details. But he wants to take the dog with him, and his parents say no, and everybody says no, but he does take the dog with him, and it turns out that the dog helps save somebody um, in, in the course of the story. Uh, the story is online. Um, all the Boys Life magazines are on online, and you can find the, the magazine online oh, and nice. read the story. Pedro. The uh, donkey mascot of the Boys Life magazine <laughs> is my main memory. I don't know why that is uh, from Boys Life. Uh, also, my second my second main memory besides Pedro the donkey is we all got chiggers from going to 
we can't, we, we, we we went camping one time in in our bo our Boy Scout group, and we all got the chiggers. And you got them from the magazine. That was the disturbing yeah. part. <laughs> <laughs> it came it came free as an insert. Yeah, those little subscription cards, highly infested. Highly infested. Look, some magazines give you perfume samples. The boys <laughs> like samples of sugars. <laughs> Trying to man up these little scouts, you know, here, have a disease. Come on, you little jerks. <laughs> <laughs> this will learn you the great outdoors. <laughs> stay home, kids. <laughs> Please stay home. Uh, so Lola, next up. First, what I was thinking when y'all said that, that was the boy's life version of the quarantine track. So if somebody couldn't be in the outdoors, they could still experience it by getting chiggers in their magazine. There you go. <laughs> you know, I mean, serve the public however you can. All right, but I have a favorite dog in sci-fi. Does anyone remember Quee Quag? Um, You've stumped the panel, Lola. Nicely done. Nicely mm -hmm. done. Tell us so, all about I it. I am a yeah. big X-Files fan, although it went off oh. the rails the last two years. I'm sorry it did. But um, one of the things I remember was Scully adopted a Pomeranian. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This is my dog. This is Precious. Oh, hey, Precious. Oh, you're a cute puppy. She is a cute baby, but she is rambunctious. She's all over the place. Um, this is what happened. So I learned two things because of Queek Quig that has helped me with these dogs. So in one of the best episodes of X-Files called Clyde Bruckman, Bruck, Bruckman's Repose, yeah. um, Clyde Bruckman saw, foresaw the death of Mrs. Lowe. And Mrs. Lowe had a dog named Queek Quig. So Clyde Bruckman, you know, foresaw her death and he left a note for Scully saying, you know, Please take care of this dog and don't, you know, don't blame her for what happened. She's just a dog. So this is when I learned that if you die in your home with dogs, the dogs will eat you. I did not know that. So ever since then, I know that and I fully expect, you know, they generally only eat beef and pork. <laughs> But I imagine they'll make an exception for when I die and there's no one to give them food. So I fully expect that they will eat me. You're going to taste right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm thinking. I'm like, they're waiting. They're like, she's 50 years old. She's not in the best of health. We'll just keep stressing her out and bouncing on her keyboard and she'll croak and then we'll have a. <laughs> So I learned that because of that. So Scully adopted Queek Quig. And we had a few episodes with Queek Quig, really cute, where Scully would give her baths and everything. But Scully got in the habit of taking Queek Quig with her on investigations. You may think that's okay, right? But they investigate the paranormal and cryptozoology. There's crypto again. Cryptozoological creatures. So in one of the episodes... She takes Queequeg with them, and they're in a cabin, and Queequeg's like, I have to go pee. Bark, bark, bark. So she's like, okay, Queequeg, I'm going to take you out in the middle of the night in the swamps where God only knows what's out there, and you're going to go pee. So, you know, you see Scully with her, you know, the little leader um, thing, um, thingamajiggy, and you all of a sudden hear the leader um, think, come back like there's no dog attached to it anymore and then she looks at it and sees the little quick quick um um collar and there's no dog and it's like and she just goes quick 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 mm. was eaten man Aww. yep maybe by an alligator maybe by a cryptozoological creature it's never really made clear but Don't that was the on it i know no. so i also Ouch. learned I also learned, watch your dogs. If they're little and it's dark and they're going out, watch them. Because we have owls here. And hawks. And so I try to be very careful. I very rarely let them out at night. But if they really have to go, I let them out. I turn the porch light on. And I worry the whole time. And I get very upset. And then they come in. 
Lola, I, I wanted to thank you. That is a great story. And also, the panel just got super dark. Yeah, it sounds like every, everyone and everything before the night is out at Lola's house will be eaten. Yes. I just don't want my dogs eaten. I'll, I can get eaten. I'm okay with it. I made peace. I'm going to die eventually. But I don't want anything to happen to my precious babies because I love them what very much. What about the owls? If they, okay, never mind. We're going to we're moving on. Cornflake. <laughs> there will be a common thread to all of the dogs that I bring up tonight. Let's see if anyone can figure it out. Now. They're I all do dogs. Not... <laughs> Bingo. Come on, Gary's face. <laughs> I think it was his Nemo. No, not for the one that I'm about to say. Now, I don't normally do impressions because none of my impressions are good, but I'm going to try and we'll see if we can figure out what dog I'm talking about. <laughs> um, Where's the kaboom? I thought there would be an earth shattering kaboom. <laughs> there is more than one dog <laughs> in sci fi that goes by K9, but I'm talking about the green one, the one that accompanied Marvin the mm. Martian. Man, I love that dog. He's so gullible, but that's what makes him such a great sidekick for Marvin the Martian, who keeps uh, blowing up the Earth because it obstructs his view of Venus, right? That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. And so we've got this green dog that's trying to help Marvin with all of his plans. And um, I always forget that the dog was green. Green with, like... Reebok sneakers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what are those cute little skirt things? Well, why is he wearing? Yeah, what? What? Why? Why the uh, the um, the uh, medieval skirt? The the um, and the hat with the brush. It on was it. a Roman it's look. Like the Roman. The it's he's he's a gladiator dog. Well, I mean, Ro Marvin is wearing the the Roman helmet, so yeah. right. It all makes sense because they're from Mars. From the <laughs> yeah. Sure. I mean, okay. I don't. I can't think of too many other green dogs, um, but uh, K9 certainly is one, and he's devoted to his Marvin the Martian, regardless of whatever hair brand scheme is underway. I love it. <laughs> oh, look, Kevin, you get a picture of him with a bazooka. <laughs> See? Yes. And unlike a lot of dog sidekicks, he was super into it. He's like, whatever Marvin wants to do. <laughs> We're doing it. We're in. Yeah. On it like blue bonnet. Or yeah, I guess in this uh, case, uh, green bonnet. If you if you look at like like the Grinch and Max, that relationship where yes. Max was sort of forced along for the yes. ride. But yeah, this this guy, totally on board. He's all in. What whatever you want to do. We're doing it. <laughs> so I um brought a uh, visual aid for my first pick. I'm very pleased to have one of these to present. And here is my first choice. And it is Hong Kong oh, Fooey. Yes. yes. Hong Kong Number Fooey. one super guy. He is the number one super guy right there. Ooh. I love Hong Kong Fooey. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he has uh, the, I would say, the second worst hidden secret identity of, of <laughs> all time. I would say Clark Kent might be the first, but really all Hong Kong Fui does is take off his mask and put mm -hmm. on the janitor outfit, and that's it. And and being the only anthropomorphic dog in the city, <laughs> you think it would make it easier for people yep. to track him down. All the bad guys are humans. He's the only dog. All the people, all, the, all of his friends are human, too. Yep. I mean, come on. <laughs> One of the only superhero transformations that takes place in a filing cabinet. Yes. And what I love is that it takes up almost... I would say a fourth of each episode. So <laughs> makes it so much better. Oh I, yeah. Hannah Barbera, uh, they got to just keep rerunning the uh, gotta keep that stuff going. File cabinet transformation scene. I mean Scatman Crothers doing the voice. Oh, the theme, I love Scatman Crothers. The theme the, the the theme song, all of it good stuff. Absolutely. And that there was a comic book 
a few years ago. They were doing those DC superheroes meeting the Hanna Barbera stories, yeah. and there was a story with uh, Hong Kong Fui and Black Lightning together <laughs> in one yeah. wonderful it was, story. It was so seventies. They went full seventies. It was perfect. That that would that was that was tremendous. Uh, so Gary, yes. The dog. dog. Pick a dog. <laughs> oh, right, right. The whole Pick thing. A dog, we're here for. Any dog. Um, I'm gonna bring the panel down, but it is Further one of the most. Yes, okay, go ahead. it is. It is one of the most <laughs> impactful episodes of anything in sci-fi. You, I've never seen any mass reaction oh, no. much like uh, um, after this. Yeah, no. you know where I'm going. I'm talking about Seymour from uh, Futurama. No! That episode broke <laughs> everybody. It horrified me. Too soon. <laughs> and he just, you go through the episode, he goes through all the stuff to bring his dog back, and then he decides, no, he probably had a happy life, and I should not bring him back. And then we see that just montage of morose, pitiful, just, oh my God. It was so horrible that the producers had to actually go and do one of the movies of the future on movies was just so that Fry could go back in time and spend the rest of the dog's life with it to try to retcon. No, it wasn't really like that. It wasn't the most horrible thing you've ever seen. He was just, he was just waiting for Fry. I mean, just. But Gary, are you going to tell us Seymour's full name? Seymour oh. Butts. <laughs> of course. Because of course. Fry. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's just, it was such, uh, yes. Uh, oh, put up Sherman's comment there. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Accurate. <laughs> Accurate. Yeah, but but I mean, it's just, if you're going to talk about dogs in sci-fi, there's no way you can skip I talking mean, about. Because like I said, just everybody, I don't know anybody that that, didn't just rip their heart the thing, out. The thing about Futurama is that even though it was, it was, they really att attacked so many sci-fi tropes and storylines and tw and twists and turns from like the entirety of sci-fi stuff. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing about leaving somebody behind when you time travel, well, they got after it in this one. Mm -hmm. Too soon. But yeah, heartbreaking. It is the scene that makes me want to adopt every dog in the world. <laughs> Kyle, I love that. Yes, it's too much. It's too much. Um, dogs are the best. Um, <laughs> unless you have cats. And sometimes they're both good. I don't know. <laughs> whoa, is, whoa, hello. Something's happened. Are we all getting booted off? Oh, we're now we're back. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. To I think it was just you, Joe. Yeah, Joe. Dog you're, you're, fest. Your I don't face know. is frozen. Joe's image is frozen, although we, we hear you. Ah, we're all frozen. Or is it just me? It's just mm -hmm. you. It's just what? you. Well, well if you you're back. back. Head a little bit down. I'll bring mine up and I, I can, you can. There you go. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, okay, well, you guys keep going. The best part about me doing me. this is I can Save eat and nobody yourself. can <laughs> You're back, Joe. You're <laughs> yeah. fine. I think that fixed it, Joe. That worked. <laughs> so, Kevin, you're up next. Yeah, well, let's see. I want to find something a little more fun after uh, all the horrors of Futurama and uh, mm. the fact that all of our dogs will someday devour our corpses. Right. Uh, here's a favorite of mine going back to the 70s. How about... About Max, the bionic dog, from uh, yes. the bionic woman. Right. So cool. Yeah, uh, Jamie Summers, the bionic woman, learned that before they started bionicifying human beings, of course, they tested it on dogs. Just the way Jor-El tested his rocket ship on Crypto the what dog. What the heck, man? Yeah. That was uh, the 70s. Uh, PETA wasn't a thing yet. Yeah, so Rudy and uh, Oscar Goldman evidently <laughs> were messing around with uh, animals before they started... Uh, Attaching uh, fake legs to uh, Steve Austin yeah. and and, uh, and Jamie, so Jamie <laughs> met Max, the bionic dog, uh, full name Maximilian, because he cost however many million dollars to uh, turn into a bionic dog. Nice. So Max had bionic legs and a bionic jaw. Yes. 
So he could because rip, what you want is a dog that could. Nope, sorry, Joe. Yeah, like, so, uh, like yeah, like a regular strength dog can rip your throat out, but yep. you want you want the bionic German Shepherd. Oh yeah, so that that, that that's a power that uh, Steve and Jamie did not have. They had regular <laughs> human mouths, but this dog, <laughs> bionic jaw, and this was actually they they were the the hope was that they could spin. Max off into his own bionic dog series. It was sort of a backdoor pilot approach they were taking when they introduced Max. However, that it didn't go, and so they just let Max stick around for uh, the third season of Bionic Woman. And so once in a while, she would uh, have a little extra adventure with her bionic dog friend, Max. I was wondering... I, I my my third season recollection of Bionic Woman is, uh, is I couldn't remember what the ultimate like, like today had there been a show with a dog on it they would have killed him off and e everyone would have been sad but in the seventies uh, he would just, he just hung out he he was there a few times and he, so you could assume hope hopefully that on Bionic Woman Max is just out there somewhere roaming around. Eating cars with his bond. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed having Max on the show. I thought that injected a little something new into uh, season three. Most Bionic of the Woman. time, when you get a few seasons in, especially in the seventies, Kevin, uh, as we all know, uh, they always add a character, usually a child. Yes, I love that on Bionic Woman they added a bionic killing machine. Max the bionic dog was the cousin Oliver of the bionic woman. <laughs> Although cousin Oliver had already been on the show because she was a school teacher and uh, Robbie Rist was one of her students on several episodes. That's great. Kevin continues his tradition of mentioning Robbie Rist in every panel he has ever you know, on. No, I turn every panel into a Robbie Rist panel. That's what I'm here for. Here's the thing. Joe has That's Manimal, true. Kevin has Robbie. <laughs> It's That's all right. I have. It's all at I have. At some point, at some point, we're going to get Robbie Riss to come to either one of these panels or Dragon Con. And at that point, we're going to have to decide, okay, now do we retire? We Is might that be done. We might be only, done at that point. We can only retire if we get Cousin Oliver and uh, the lady from Manimal on the same panel. <laughs> oh, I, I'm just I'm breaking out into a cold sweat, Gary. That would be good. <sighs> okay. So uh, let's go now to Linda for the next person on your list. The next dog on your list. Linda, hello. Okay. I have to, I have to play with the microphone. Um, there was somebody I was uh, watching today. He's involved with time travel. He's Mr. Peabody. Mm, oh, yes. Peabody. <laughs> nice. I totally forgot Peabody. That's great. I also forgot Peabody. Um I loved him on the old Bullwinkle show um, when when we were youths. But I must say this, the Mr. Peabody movie from a few years ago, also pretty good. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I think Mr. Peabody was Stephen Colbert. Oh. Yeah. Oh, cool. But no, it's very time travel -y and fun. And, um, and, of course, the original... The original uh, Mr. Peabody cartoons, excellent. Mm -hmm. Just yes. and his boy no. Sherman, and his boy Sherman. They made no bones about the fact that Sherman was the pet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first episode tells how he adopted Sherman from a nasty orphanage. Really? Yes. I don't remember that yeah. at all. Wow. I remember that one. I know that they, they covered it in the movie uh, in a less distressing way. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So there's just this nasty human orphanage and smart Mr. Peabody says, you know what? I'll take that one. <laughs> is that is that what happened basically, Linda? Uh, he, he basically was walking down the street one day and saw two bullies beating up Sherman and took Sherman back to the orphanage, which was kind of uh, Dickensian to say the least. <laughs> and he, it shows he, he went through this whole process. I mean, he had, they took him to court and everything. And there's a lawyer there going, a dog can't adopt a boy. And he said, well, certainly can. And I'll. <laughs> so, I like that I'll legal argument. Oh, well, he certainly can. Oh yeah. Well, I, say I don't see if a, if a boy can't, 
can't can adopt a dog. I don't see why a dog can't adopt a boy. Mm. Ah, <laughs> the old switcheroo. I love it. Yep. <laughs> I gotta say, yeah, and the uh, the the. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm recollecting now those, those Mr. Peabody and Sherman's, I may have learned more about history from them than from actual books. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. My history teachers were always confused by all the constant references to cartoon time traveling dogs in all my reports, but mm -hmm. that's where I was getting all my information from as well. Exactly. Exactly. I learned a lot of history, maybe not accurate history, but history. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. I'm not saying definitely not accurate. Maybe not accurate. Well, those of us went to school in the South will never know whether it's accurate or not. No, we Sorry. really <laughs> We really will not. Linda? My, my husband's sitting here backstage. He, he says he doesn't know how to make a comment, but he wants to say that his favorite is Scraps from Airplane 2. Mm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I am so glad you mentioned scraps. That is so great. I forgot all about it. Play two. <laughs> awesome. The mm, we we're gonna have to do an. We already did an airplane panel, but I don't think we got to airplane two. We got to do that again. <laughs> yes. Shut it down. We're doing an airplane two panel. No, surely scraps. you can't be serious. Oh, I do. Don't call me Shirley. Thank you, Lola. <laughs> no, oh, scraps is great. Uh, one of the funniest, one of the funniest things about um, I think Airplane Two, Shatner and Scraps, right there, side by side, funniest things in uh, Airplane Two. Uh, let's go to Lola. I'm learning a lot about my second choice. My second choice is Ralph the dog from the Muppets. Oh, oh man, oh, yes. 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 And I always liked him because of his ears. He's got those long, floppy ears. Well, I'm learning. I'm reading. We did learn that in school in the South. We did learn to read. So I am able to do that. Not much else, but I am able to do that. So did you know that Ralph was like the first Muppet? I think I did know that. Yeah, Ralph was a, predates the other Muppets. Yeah, there's old, old footage of like early commercials and stuff yeah. with Ralph the he dog. Right? Yep, and he was on the Jimmy Dean show. He yeah. was the sidekick on Jimmy Dean. He had more fan mail than Jimmy Dean sometimes. Uh, I, if you want a good uh, reading on this, I highly recommend A Feat of Lunatic Daring, a podcast okay. by a friend of the track, Chad J. Shonk, where they actually are watching everything Henson's done from the very beginning, and they do a whole episode on Rolf and Jimmy Dean. We got it, and he was also, Rolf was in the... Um, the the reel to pitch Sesame Street. Yep. So, really? Yeah, pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. it, I yeah. absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. Rolf's the best. He, he is. is. And he plays the piano quite well. I know. And he's he's like was, the piano man. Like, was Rolf in the Electric Mayhem band? No, he was just in the Muppet Show Orchestra. So, you know, I don't think we even put him in the uh, fictional uh, fictional musicians tournament. Yeah, because he wasn't a band. He's a solo act. Mm -hmm. well, so was uh, Larry. Well, don't bring facts into this. <laughs> don't bring facts into this, Joe. It's too late for that. I'm not. I'm you know not what, wondering. though? Ralph, he is his own thing. He's solo. He doesn't have time for any of that BS. He no drama, no drama with Ralph. No drama. That's why or, you know, we are going to do, you know, a whole new set of that at some point. So at some point, we'll get <laughs> Ralph we'll... may make an appearance, but, you know, he's a hashtag loose. justice for Ralph. Right. <laughs> exactly. And it's spelled so, it R-O-W-L-F. I never yes. realized it was spelled that way. So let's go to Cornflake. Do, 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 do. I'm taking us to Inspector Gadget <gasps> to talk about Brain. <laughs> yes. Uh, Going back to the 80s, Penny's dog, right. Brain, who is the only one who really knows that Penny is the one that solves Inspector Gadget's <laughs> missions. Uh, well, because he's, he's doing all the legwork. <laughs> He's doing all the legwork. He's making sure Gadget doesn't hurt himself. And he's making sure Gadget doesn't recognize him while he's following Gadget oh. around. Thus, all the crazy costumes. 
Um, I think he's he's some kind of beagle mix. Uh, we he he makes dog noises save for one episode there's always that trope you can give the dog the collar and it translates what the dog is trying to say so yeah. penny did make him one of those at one point i think the episode was called no brainer uh, ah. but brain was the the dog on television and in in, I, I guess you could loosely call inspector gadget sci-fi i i certainly am oh, I no, we, we don't do uh, labels Pinky yeah, counts. Yeah. <laughs> um, Brain was the dog that made me want to have a dog. And briefly, Aww. my family did have a dog named Jack that kind of looked like Brain. But uh, to this day, the reason I have dogs is because Brain charmed me all those years ago when I was a kid. So cool. You know, there's <laughs> also a cat. I just realized there's also a cat named Brain was part of the gang on Top Cat. Top cat, of course. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, one of them was named Brain. That's right. I mm. wonder which one was actually brainier if we faced off Brain versus Brain. Mm. Oh, and Sherman points out that Brain was voiced by the uh, legendary Frank Welker. Yeah. Hey, who yeah. is pretty much the voice of my entire Saturday morning childhood. Oh, of course. <laughs> yes. But especially dogs. For a guy that voices everyone and everything for the last, you know, 50 something years, so many dogs he voices, especially. Such as um, Scooby Doo that we haven't mentioned yet. Well, he's Fred there, yeah. Yeah, we haven't mentioned. Uh... Is he Fred? Oh my! Well, well, I'm an idiot then. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, was Don Messick the original voice of Scooby? I think. Okay. I think so. And but yes. I believe I'm sure Frank has voiced Scooby as well at some point or another uh, among a thousand other cartoon dogs. Apparently my Google doesn't work right. <laughs> oh, no, you have the Alabama version. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's uh, so many, so many questions. Um, all right. So, so uh, my, the next one on my list is from the brain of Walt Disney. Goofy. Yes. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> I love Goofy. I have always loved Goofy because he's the only impression that I can do, I dare say, terrifically. <laughs> I dare say I'm great at the Goofy impression. And, um, of course, my, my, my daughter would also say that 10 years ago. Now she would be like, Ugh, what? Well, we have to hear it now. I guess. Uh, so, oh, 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 is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not what we want, but it's what we need. It's what you need. It was, uh, it's what's going to happen no matter what. Oh, it's what's going to happen. So what I thought I would do for the, um, the goofy impression is... Hold the on. The introduction gotta, of I, Manimal? Ha, 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 ha. Hang on a minute. Hang on just a minute. Nobody panic. When I say I'm going to be prepared, what I mean is I'm not. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do for the Goofy impression is uh, Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses. Yes. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> <laughs> Welcome to the jungle, Mickey. We got fun and games. We got everything you want, Mickey. We know the names. We're the people that can find whatever you may need. <laughs> if you got the money, Mickey, we got your disease in the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. Watch it bring it to your knees, knees. Oh, Mickey, I want to watch you bleed. <laughs> and thank you. Now, why isn't that the introduction to every show? We need that. We need that introduction. Gorsh. Gorsh. <laughs> that was great. That's my favorite. And uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I want my... every, every Disney cartoon now. I would like to end with Goofy expressing his desire that he could watch the mouse bleed. Yes. <laughs> I always wondered, I always wondered this about Goofy. Of course, we could spend an hour 
wondering, and, and we should, about Goofy versus Pluto. Why does Goofy wear clothes and Pluto doesn't? Oh, that was well, Pluto big... is a dirty pervert. <laughs> <laughs> that was the big Walking debate. Around in... butt naked all the time. The kids in Stand By Me, that was their big debate. Was uh, Yes, exactly. If, if, if Pluto's a dog, what's Goofy? My my uh, my my big question though is Goofy his actual name or are Donald and Mickey and Daisy and Minnie are they just buttholes? They're monsters. They have no souls. They know, they they just walk around going, "Hey, what's up, Goofy?" Well, as we all know, the soul is contained in the pinky finger, and Ma Mickey yeah. only has three <laughs> fingers. So yeah, they're right. very very cruel. The dog's real name was Idiot. <laughs> they, they should have they respected nuts. that. They should they have shown nuts. respect. They were called him by his real name. Yep. Calling him Goofy. <laughs> yes, we can totally 100% do that. <laughs> so, uh, the upper part of Gary's face. Who's next? <laughs> uh, well, I want to throw out a, a honorable mention just because if Deanna is watching, the littlest hobo the little wandery dog from Canada uh, that she brings up all the time. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> little oh. little hobo. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a little dog. He's running around Canada, <laughs> having adventures and helping people out and then running mm. around to the next town, like a, a little fuzzy David Banner um, yeah. <laughs> and doesn't, turn into a giant now that's actually you know if he turned into a giant ma bull mastiff twice an episode that would be interesting but no i am actually going to go scooby-doo adjacent nice uh and one of my favorite dogs as a child dino mutt uh -huh. sidekick of blue fountain falcon sorry okay. blue falcon blue fountain is a whole different thing whole different thing it's like a rusty venture but you do it upside down um what but, you know, Dino Mutt is, is like, it, he hit all my boxes. He was a dog. He was cybernetic. He was uh, just the right amount of silly. Uh, he was a great counterpoint to uh, Gary Owens' very Batman-esque serious superhero. And I, I just, I love that dog. It was like an Inspector Gadget, but a dog. He was great. And, and I and also this... liked hmm? This was uh, uh, Frank Welker. Frank Welker yes. was the voice Finally, of Dino Finally, Frank Welker. Yes. Uh, Gary, once again, proving that you and I are on the same wavelength, I bought another prop for this <laughs> panel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is nice. one of my favorite things. Yes. Dynamite. Nice. And I actually really did like in the recent Scoob movie, which is actually really good. Yeah. Dino Mutt's the competent one. <laughs> and the Blue Falcon, the current Blue Falcon, is the incompetent kid of the original Falcon. Nice. Top-notch stuff. Top drawer. Uh, but as and, a huge uh, fan of the $6 million man and a bionic dog, it was just like, yeah, it's everything <laughs> I wanted. It's got everything. It's the combo. Uh, Kevin. Yeah, well, I wanted to get in a, a weird one, and that is uh, so much weird live action stuff, and a, a bunch of them involve dogs, like Saturday morning live action shows. Uh, one that I just want to throw a quick mention of, because I think people have forgotten it, is there was a show called Run Joe Run in the mid-70s. It was Saturday morning live action show about a dog. It was The Fugitive, the concept mm. of, of the, but The Fugitive was a dog. It was literally a dog on the run being chased for a crime the dog did not commit. Please tell me the crime was murder. Please tell me the crime <laughs> I think was, it was murder. murder. Yes, that was a real show. I have an even weirder example, though, of a live action Saturday morning show. And that's, you know, Benji was all the rage yes. in the 70s and 80s. Benji, all the Benji TV series and all the movies and stuff, that goofy little dog, Benji. They made a bizarre Saturday morning show in 1983 called Benji, Zax, and the Alien Prince. I'm going to slide over because I'm blocking everybody, wow. I think. But this, there's Benji. But this was, they, they teamed up Benji with an alien boy, like traveled Wait, to the, Earth. The weird looking thing isn't the alien? They're no. both weird looking, but uh, <laughs> yeah, there's Alien Prince who uh, lands on Earth. He's being chased by uh, like bounty hunters from his home planet, and he has a robot named Zax. 
and Benji meets up with them, and they're and it, it, they're on the run together. While there's this like man and woman alien, they they look like it's like if Ursa and General Zod nice. were uh, chasing a robot and a dog and a small child <laughs> on Saturday morning, and it's it, Hanna Barbera produced very bizarre. It, it's like they had three shows and they just thought let's just mash them all together you know it yeah. seems like it was probably just the concept that developed in that weird kind of Hanna-Barbera way and so this was like 1983 so you know not so we can't even blame the 70s for this yeah yeah it was especially weird considering how late it happened but it did just one season and it's out there you can watch these uh on youtube and i did i was watching some of this today and i i almost missed the panel because i thought maybe i'm just gonna watch <laughs> you're going down the benji zacks and the little prince rabbit hole yeah 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 mm -hmm. so it's so weird and goofy so i highly this recommend. is one that needs a reboot someone yes. get marvel on the phone <laughs> and on, am i just hungry or does that robot smell look like a hamburger <laughs> it looks like a hamburger <laughs> I'm going to say this. <laughs> the question being, how does Kevin know all this? How indeed. Yeah. Uh, there, there are no answers. Uh, I don't know so, why I know the things I do. I have a problem, I guess, is the, the short answer. Yep. Short answer. <laughs> yeah, Cornflake can back me up. She has to deal with this kind of... the correct answer, but... Um, this is every week. <laughs> for Cornflake, this is every week. She hears me just screaming yeah. about obscure Saturday morning live action shows. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> Cornflake. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it's, the Flopcast. The Flopcast is like an exercise in codependent psychosis. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. We have to make new business cards now, Jeff. <laughs> hey, we do have a promo coming up. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Joe. You can just do it for us. I'll do that. And may no, maybe Goofy will do it. Yeah. Oh, welcome <laughs> to the jungle, Flopcast listeners. That's right. So, mm -hmm. Linda, next up. Do you have one more? We'll, we'll go. Did, go uh... did we, uh, before I joined, did we talk about Astro? We had no. not. No. no. So please. One of my favorite sci-fi dogs. Astro was on the Jetsons and also later was in the 80s. He was on... Um, uh, Space, well, the show was called Space Stars. Yes. And Astro's segment was called Astro and the Space Mutts. And that's Voiced by Don Messick, right? If I slide uh, over. Messick, there they yeah. are. So that, that image there is from Astro and the Space Mutts where it was Astro and some other dogs, and they worked with this uh, space police officer, the dude with the Freddie Mercury mustache there. Sure. And, and yes. probably the Freddie Mercury actual outfit. It might have actually been Freddie Mercury in space. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that tracks. That totally tracks. <laughs> what I remember about the, again, why I remember the one fact about the, <laughs> is that on uh, the Jetsons, of course, he spoke like the, the scooby doo -ees. he uh, it was r everything roarge roarge <laughs> but on space stars his descendant let's say on astro and the space muds no speech impediment yep. they bred that out over the course of <laughs> <laughs> so so the space stars was the future even from the jetsons perspective oh you know i don't know my thought, and I think one of you guys said this, and I'm I'm going to subscribe to it, is Jetsons is you know because everything you never saw the ground in the Jetsons, but the ground, I'm saying as I believe some of you have uh, either Gary or Kevin brought up, I think that on the ground it's Thundar the Barbarian. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. But uh, yeah, I wonder if because uh, uh, um, uh, let's see the. And it's possible okay. Ast Astro may have just had this secret double life, and the Jetsons knew nothing about it. Astro would just be, I'm going out for a while, Jetsons, and then he'd you know, hook up, I think, hook I up think with this that police force. He had, a, he had a triple life because Elroy found him. He was a lost dog, and it turns out he was Tralfaz, and he was owned by that wealthy guy. Oh, right, right, right. Him. Oh, yes. yes. I just saw that episode the other day. It was playing at my comic book shop. Tralfaz. <laughs> <laughs> So good. What we're learning here is that there's so much outside of the Futurama episode. There's so much good dog stuff 
<laughs> out there. And I would say ma the majority of them don't end in heartbreak. There's not, <laughs> there's, the, for every old yeller, there's a few episode things where the dog lives. Not Queequeg. No, not Queequeg. Not <laughs> uh, Hooch from Turner and Hooch. <laughs> more of a warning. Still mad. Still haven't gotten over that one. Mm -hmm. But what I wanted to do uh, for this to to close out the panel is I wanted uh, I wanted to um, get all of our panelists to provide and we'll put this in the show notes with all the links. Um, tell us about a uh, a local pet rescue or in a local adoption center that you guys might have used or a friend of yours have used. Um, mine is the um, Shelby County um, Humane Society. My, my friend Bobby, is uh, he, he is the PR director there, and every day he posts pictures. He, um, uh, he said from day one, I really shouldn't be working here because I'm going to take all of these animals home. And, on, and he said this before he started the job, and then day one he said, here's my new dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah, so so it's uh, spiraled completely out of control from here. But in Alabama, the Shelby County Humane Society, they do good work. Gary, you got one? I do. I have uh, the Atlanta Animal Rescue Friends, uh, also known as the AARF. Neat. If you, yeah, yeah, okay. I was waiting for somebody to say it. Arf. Um, <laughs> Arf. Oh, man. Oh, oh. oh. Ah. So slow. That was way yes. too subtle for, for me. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. Uh, but they are a wonderful foster and adoption program. Uh, they do a lot of community w good work. Uh, they do different events and fundraisers. And they're in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Neat. All right. Uh, Kevin. You know, uh, I am actually deferring to uh, Cornflake is our resident uh, pet adoption expert on the Flopcast, and so uh, I'm gonna uh, Cornflake. I believe the plan is uh, she is gonna double down on her recommendations. Nice. Two for the price of one out yeah, of yeah. me. And uh, I recently became the adopted mom of a bonded pair of senior dogs. I got them through Almost Home Rescue. You can go to almosthomerescue.net to find out more about them. They're out of Maine. And they partner with a group down in the South called Hail Mary Rescue, moving heaven and earth to find all these dogs' new homes and my dogs came up from Louisiana. I awesome. adopted Buddy and Grace and uh, love my buddy man and Gracie Goose. Almosthomerescue.net. The whole team was wonderful. They make sure that every dog that's being adopted, it's not first come, first serve, goes to the right home. So uh, I recommend them. And I also highly recommend out of New Hampshire, Mary's Dogs, Rescue and Adoption, all kinds of dogs available coming up from uh, places where they otherwise wouldn't stand much of a chance. And if you're particularly excited about adopting a puppy, Mary's dog seems to always have a lot of them. They were super sweet. Uh, if we add more dogs to our household, if we can somehow shoehorn more in, Mary's dogs are going to be the ones that I go to. So you can go to marysdogs.org. Uh, sorry, marysdogs.org to learn more about them. Awesome. Uh, Linda. Come here, Tucker. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. Come here. Itty, itty. Come here. There She's you a go. good dog. Aww. Yeah. Tucker, get your face in the picture. Oh, there he is. Never mind. He's from, we believe it's mostly mutts, and they were at Petco one day when we were looking for a dog. And our previous dog came from the Cobb County Animal Shelter, and she was a sweetie, too. She reminds me of a lot of the little brown dog I just saw a few minutes ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Giving her mommy a kiss. <laughs> But this is nice. I Go love on. it. Lola. All right. So 10 years ago, I got my cat Virtue and I needed to get her fixed. And people said, oh, take her to First Coast. No more homeless pets because you can get it for a discounted price. So I did. And they did a fabulous job. Um, they're Jacksonville based, but they serve the Northeast Florida, which is where I am. And they're 
their address, their web address is fcnmhp.org, and they're fabulous, and I appreciate them very much. That is so awesome. You guys. Mm -hmm. Thank and I also you. want to give a shout out to oh, uh, Tony Ann Martin uh, couldn't make it. And uh, Kyle posted about it. Their dog, Professor Zoom, they got from savinggracenc.org. And Sean Rosado, who couldn't make it tonight and was supposed to be here, uh, wanted to make sure we knew about keeperofthewild.org. I will uh, get those links and put those up also in our show notes. It's um, pets are the best. I, most of us have grown up with um, dogs, cats, chickens. <laughs> Snakes, uh, rats. Somebody say chicken. Chicken. <laughs> oh, possums. Right <laughs> um, and, and they, I, I've, I've, it would take me a minute to count the dogs that my family has had throughout my life. Um, one of my favorite stories that my dad would tell is, um, the dog that we had throughout my childhood, uh, his name was Freckles. And my dad found him in the pasture when he was feeding horses. Uh, and Freckles just ran out into the pasture. He was just a, 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 a mutt dog. And um, dad decided to keep him. And he lived 20 years after, uh, a, a, after that. And uh, we had uh, his son was named, of course, Freckles Jr. But... <laughs> That uh, he found Freckles on, or Freckles found him on the day I was born. So that's one of one of my one of our cool family stories. Um, and and, the, and he liked the dog more. Yes, and that is why the dog lived in the house, and I lived in the kennel. Okay. <laughs> the <laughs> uh, explains a lot, doesn't it? Though. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for coming and hanging out with on Thursday. Oh, perfect. Uh, <laughs> Here they come. The owls are coming nice. in, Lola. Everyone's about to be devoured by owls at Lola's house. It's Live on happen. camera right now. They're they antagonize the, the owls. They antagonize them. This. End of the panel. Suddenly, it's a crime scene. <laughs> Quick, Everybody quick, stop what you're doing. We're gonna just gonna watch the live camera. <laughs> oh no, the dogs are here. The dogs are here. No. <laughs> Doggy cam. We lost Gary. <laughs> uh, you know, one thing we we forgotten to do in all the dog related uh, chaos uh, uh, is um, everybody tell us where you can be found on the interwebs. Uh, you can find, well, you can find me and you can find Cornflake because this, this is the first time Cornflake and I have been on a panel like this together, even though yeah. we've been doing a podcast together literally every week for the last nine years. And <laughs> our show is called The Flopcast. It's just silly and goofy just like this. We just talk about goofy old retro stuff from the 70s and 80s and uh, all sorts of other stuff as well every week. And you can find us at flopcast.net net and we promise we will not mail you a magazine full of chiggers <laughs> thank you well kevin won't i won't, I won't. <laughs> cannot speak and for linda. both of us linda where on the interweb can you be found if you uh want to um, be found? i'm on facebook and i have a, a very large website of very divergent uh interests like remember when the old tv series about radio and I have a very large Lassie website that many people like, so you can oh, wow. check it out. LassieWeb.org. Oh, man, wow. we didn't even get to Lassie. They're yeah, so did. Linda, holding <laughs> we, out on us. Turns that, out you're a Lassie super expert on the internet. Man. Heck, yeah. Come on. Rockets. That's true. There, there, there were episodes of Lassie that took place at Cape Canaveral. So sure. She was not in space. Yes, Very man. Nice. There's so much. There's so much going on. We 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 don't we we gotta. We'll have we'll we'll do part two of all these things. And <laughs> Lola, where can you be found? First of all, I've been to Port Canaveral. I've never been to Cape Canaveral, but I've been to Port Port Canaveral. Oh, you gotta go. I want to. I just you know need time off because you never know when the launch is going to really go because they say the launch is going to be this day, but then it rains and I know it's going to be this day. So one day when I have like a whole week off, I'm going to go. When you're well, not being devoured by owls. <laughs> tell, us, tell us your website. Whoa. You know what? Okay. Joe, you are Clyde 
Brokeman's repose because that's how I'm going to die. I foresaw it. I am going to be eaten by owls and my dogs in the year 2044. Makes sense. So Makes it certainly does. It certainly does. But, you know, I'm trying to live life as much as I can before then. You have to. Uh, you can find me at lolalaracy.com. Um, I, I supposed to be doing a podcast, but because of my dogs and financial reasons, it's just everything's blown up around me, but that's okay. Um, but I'm also, I'm all over the place. If you Google me, you either find me or dead ladies from the 1800s. Sure. Because my name was popular in the 1800s and I'm actually also eaten by owls Mm -hmm. (laughs) or dogs or dogs. They're probably, it's a mystery. They're still working on it. (laughs) It's you a know, place and now. that's because we live in the South. No one really knows what happens in the South. We just kind of keep it. We we zip our lips about stuff. <laughs> can confirm. Uh, and cornflake. You can find me at flopcast.net. I hang with that guy, Kevin. Well, I guess he's can I the the way that the internet's go on this it confuses me. There, that guy up there. There he is. <laughs> yep. And uh, next week, um, uh, as you uh, uh, everybody join us on Facebook, we do silly stuff like this all during the week. We'll be back next week. And our next week episode is a uh, collaboration with our friends at the uh, Military SF and Media uh, mm-hmm. track. We're going to do a Babylon 5 panel. And um, Gary, uh, you will... Uh, be on board our Babylon Five panel next uh, next week, and you are you and our friend Jessa are also doing a Babylon Five related thing coming up soon. Yes, uh, we have started a Beacon in Space, a Babylon Five bot, uh, podcast. Uh, it's Jessa's first time watching it. Uh, my m- multiples, <laughs> <laughs> and we're discussing what she thinks of the show and what I think of the show and how well it holds up, and it should be uh, it should be quite enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, congratulations. Mm, thank you. I heard y'all. there's a move coming up. Yep. Uh, she is headed down this way. And Gary is going to be moving into my backyard. And speaking of my backyard, <laughs> so join us next week when Gary will say, But what about Babylon 6 as the reboot? See, Mwah. solid gold. Once again, everybody, thank you. We will see you very soon. <laughs>